Hello, good day. Welcome back. I'm sure you are enjoying and learning a lot from this um, embedded system design ARM Cortex M4 series. Today is day seven. I hope you went through previous sessions and you got yourself familiar about different concepts, about uh, different registers and how the functional block diagram is and where every peripheral is connected to which bus, etc. I'm sure you are really excited and let's get in to see what day seven unfolds for us. Today is day seven in the beginner course. Today it's the actual hands-on project. You're going to learn two different projects. Uh, it's a small project, so that's why I classified as mini project. The first one you're going to learn from scratch to learn about how to blink an LED. And then the second part of the project, the second project, you're going to still control the LED, but with the help of a switch. So you're going to learn how each of that operates and each of that works in IDE. And also I got the hardware set up here. So I'm going to show you how each and every um, code line works. And I'm also going to show you how the special function registers behave when you write a line of code in the IDE. These are all the sections you will learn today. You're going to learn how to create a new project in STM32 cube IDE and view all its special function registers where they are all used and what happens to the uh, different types of registers etc. The first project is how to blink an LED and the second project is how to read data from a push button. And today I'm going to use STM32 F411 RE, uh, which I connected to my computer through this uh, USB port, USB cable. It's connected and as you can see the lights are on and that's an indication that it's powered on and it's ready to go and uh, you're going to learn more about it shortly. So I'll just minimize this view. When it's uh, appropriate, I'll show you. Otherwise, I don't want to distract you from the presentation. Before we jump into learning the real interesting stuff, I would like to introduce ourselves, who we are and what we do. I'm representing A2DG. It's a startup by Anbukarasu Brothers, my brother Alex and myself Faru. We started in 2023. Both of us gathered over 20 years experience in the industry and we would really like to share our experience and our knowledge to you all so that it can be helpful for you all to build up and be a strong professional engineer. Um, I, I believe going through a series of courses, it will shape into a better person and you'll come out of a, as a new version from where you are right now. So our mission is to convey to at least 200,000 future professionals so they learn everything through our online courses. And one good thing is you can study at your own pace at any time, wherever you are. So that's really good about it. So that's who we are. A little bit about me, I'm Arul Prakash Anbukarasu. You can call me as Arul or APA, as popularly as I would like to be. <laughs> okay, I have 20 plus years of experience working in Australia. I came here in 2003, did my master's majoring in embedded systems, VLSA and in project management. And since then I've been working in different industries, mainly on renewable energy se sector, concentrating on solar and wind energy system conversion, power systems, lead acid batteries, and network embedded systems that's connected with the automatic teller machines, the teller cycle recycling um, machines, or teller cash registers also, point of sale pause and banking automation systems, smart parking operations, and my majoring in embedded systems, VLSA and project management. I have a small announcement to make. I categorized into two different groups as a YouTube viewers and then internship professionals. What do you get from these two? 
as a YouTube viewer, you are eligible to get a free e-certificate if you attend at least 28 classes. But due to YouTube regulations, I can't leave the video there. It has to be removed after two or three days. So if you miss out a day or two, then you can't really go back and revise because um, the video won't be there. So for that main purpose, please, I humbly request you to join our internship professional uh, curriculum where that acquires you to get an uh, internship certificate. And believe you me, take my word, that's worth a lot. The money you spend on this, it means you are starting to shape up for that future that you are expecting to be. Also, you will get to have your own personal login to log into our learning management system portal so you can get to each and every day session as I finish, I upload there and you can start to learn on its side. And by completing the whole session, that counts as your attendance as well. So you don't have to uh, go to YouTube to watch it. You can study at your own pace, at your own time. So that's why internship comes really handy. Not only that, on top of that, you get unlimited access to course contents. At any time, you can go back to it and the PDF documents and the source codes, it will be there waiting for you. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I missed a YouTube session. Where am I going to get it? Join in with our internship program and you'll get it there. And also unlimited course video access. You can stop, you can pause, you can come back and watch it again. It will be all there waiting for you. So uh, no need to worry. Just come back and learn. And that's the limit you have. And if you get stuck in the middle, please contact our backend team. And the team is friendly and they'll be able to help you to move you along to um, help you to study through. Okay, these are all the materials required. So please contact Pantex Solutions. They are a big manufacturing company and they would be able to help you to acquire because over the years they've been helping a lot of uh, upcoming professionals like you and they are keen to help a lot more. So please contact them, Pantex Solutions. They'll be able to acquire all these materials required. You need all of these materials because the more you practice on your hands-on, meaning pressing this button or uh, connecting this pin and doing what you see in the IDE, it gives you a much in-depth experience because um, you're actually trying to do something and that stays in your brain and in your mind for longer time than just listening to me and watching uh, the video and listening to it. You can only get, say, about 15%, but actually when you start to do it with the help of the hardware, with the help of the hardware, STM32 F411RE, like uh, I've shown you, like this board, then you get a lot out of this from this, believe you me, and this is worth a lot. So please invest on this and try to get this board and start to practice from today. So from today on, you need to have the hardware so you will get more um, uh, experience on parallel to your own sake to practice. So I, I will stop that to distract you. Okay, please contact Pantex Solutions and they will be able to help you to acquire all of that. Are you keen to get your hands on to this STM 32 F411RE board and want to flick that switch and get this LED activated? Yeah, you are. I can sense, I can see that. See, I can read your mind. No, I'm only joking. Okay, let's get in. Let's get in to learn and uh, see what unfolds and I will show you um, step by step from scratch so you can be more familiar to write your own code and from this a uh, small thing can big thing happen. So these are all the basic fundamental registers that you need to master. So yeah, the more attention you create and also taking plenty of notes will help you to boost your confidence. So you can be like me uh, in 20 years time or even with the current status, uh, you can read this and be a master within a few years to get around the whole development life cycle. 
Okay, let's get in and get our hands dirty and get in there. I would like you to do a couple of things to um, for you to get familiar with uh, this setup. So how to blink an LED? You need to go to this link that I've given you and you need to download these schematics. Uh, I'm trying to connect to the server. Uh, let's try if it lets me to connect to that server, then I can show you where to go. If not, okay, sorry to keep you waiting. I think that's taking a while, so I'll, I'll show you. So this is where this link will take you. It will take you to STM32 site and you need to go to in the search on the top or here you need to type Nucleo F411RE and once you get into this page, exactly this page, you come to CAD resources and if you scroll down there will be columns saying schematics. So click on that and start to download. or you can copy paste this whole link and this will take you directly to the uh, schematics section and it will help you to download but i think my internet could be a little bit slower uh, so it's taking a while to register to the server but uh, anyway i have copied it here i'm going to share this in the group facebook group so you can download there or you can go to this link and you can download the schematics the Schematics is about the nuclear board F411RE. So you will know each and every bit of that pin, where um, every peripheral is, where uh, the USB ports are, etc. So this is very handy. You need to do that. So I'll cancel this. Let's go in. So the first program that we're going to learn is it's on page five after you download in the schematics. It's on page five. We're going to learn about how to blink this LED. If you are uh, already known about how to read the schematics, it always has a label, every component inside the uh, schematics. And this is another section. This is in PCB design. This is the schematic. Um, so. I pretty much worked in every part of it, so I knew how to draw schematics. Schematics is where you, from paperwork, you put it in the software and you draw the schematics, and you connect the physical wires in, in software, not, not in hardware, but in software. Okay. Everyone has to start from here, so blinking an LED, you think that it's uh, uh, a small project, but you need to understand the logic behind it because Everywhere you see LED comes in its effect. For example, even uh, when you charge your mobile phone, there is an indicator LED light to show the uh, charging state. So LED fits in everywhere. Um, so please pay attention. And this is only a small concept, you will get it. So take this LED. I'll turn my uh, board view on. Okay, so this LED2, this LED2 right here, where I'm pointing, uh, I'll take further closer so you may get to see it's here, LD2, yeah. If you see the schematics, LED, LED, the LD2, green LED, it's connected to this wire and that's connected to PA5. What is PA5? You might have guessed it. It's port A and pin 5. This LED is physically connected to a GPIO. The GPIO that we learned from yesterday or uh, from the previous session, it's connected to port A and pin 5. So you got to learn to toggle this LED. So that's the first project. And the second project is you're going to control that LED 
on and off operation with the help of a push button switch which is nothing but this there is a blue switch if you press the LED will come on if you release the LED will be off if you press the LED will come on if you release the LED will be off and that's on uh, if you go to user manual on nuclear board I will share this in the face face book group as well sorry um, on page 13 this is where uh, you will see the LD2 this is where it lives this is the STM32 ST microelectronics STM32 F411 RE nuclear board these are all the components and LD2 is just here okay the next one uh, the next project we're going to learn about controlling from a push button switch again you need to go back um, you can use the same schematics it's in a different page page 3 so this is page 3 this is how it will look and there is a switch B1 that's what we're going to learn how to interface that switch with the microcontroller as you can see this switch is connected through this line and it's connected to PC13 PC13 is nothing but yes you got it right it's port C and it's connected to pin 13 that's what PC13 is and you're going to learn from scratch how to write a program to control the LED through the switch push button and again if you go to the nuclear board user manual on page 13 you will see where it lives so this is where the blue push button switch is this is the blue push button switch you're going to learn to program okay now let's see uh, start from our functional block diagram so if you go to page 15 on the STM32 F411 data sheet you will see this picture I can't fit it because it's really uh, deep in so I need to maximize and zoom in which the view of this ports this is what you get so these are all the GPIO ports that you're going to learn about today and what did we learn from the previous slide where is the LED connected come on <laughs> okay the LED is connected to port A5 so if you go to the functional block diagram that's port A and port A is connected to AHP bus the advanced high peripheral bus and that bus is connected to ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller so that's it this is the bus that's connected to microcontroller M4 I'll show you in the data sheet as well um, so again I recommend you to download both the data sheets so uh, the data sheet and the reference manual is like your um, main go-to document you need to summarize this if you want to use Cortex M4 series so there is GPIO port A uh, that's connected to HP1 bus and that HP bus is connected to communicate to with a ARM Cortex M4 this you saw earlier in um, day 4 session as well I went in details to explain everything about it so we're going to get the uh, business end of it now so you're going to learn about how to code and write your own codes okay let's go back and see what next is in order to use any ports you got to enable that port first to tell the microcontroller that you're going to use that port so where is the LED connected it's connected on port A so you have to enable GPIO A which means the bit 0 on RCC HB1 HB1 ENR register if you go to reference manual it's on page 114 and you will see this register so we have to set this bit 0 as 1 so that means you are telling the microcontroller we are using port A as um, as an enable so this is enabling the register clock control as well so this is a must 
and its offset value is 0 plus 30. I'll tell you in a minute when we go into coding. And the next one is you need to consider about the port mode register. As yesterday we learned about, or the day before we learned about what port mode register is. Yes, you might have all guessed if you revised earlier, you would be knowing it can be used as for four different states. If it is a zero, zero, by default, it's set as input. If you want to set it as output, you need to change it as zero, one, zero, one. And if you want to use that as a alternate function, you need to write here one, zero, or if you want to use this port mode register as an analog, you need to use that as one, one. And it's offset value is zero, zero. The next one is output type register. In STM32 F411, it comes as a push-pull, so we're not going to do anything. So it is zero in this um, output type register. Only if you use open drain, then um, you have to enable that as one. Its offset value is zero, it's zero four. Next is the output data register, because we're going to see the output on the LED through our code. So the data that um, you want to see will be stored in the output data register and comes out to this LED. So this register is really important, ODR. And its offset value is 14. The next one is the input data register, which we will use it in the second project when we use the push button to control, uh, push button to control the LED we use the input data register. So that's where this register will come in play. And its offset value is 0x10. Now, if you go into reference manual page 114, uh, you will see RCC HB1. You have to enable the peripheral clock first to start writing and uh, telling your microcontroller you are using that port. So you need to enable and its offset value is 30. And if you zoom in, this is what you will see. Address offset and the value is 30. And you're going to enable GPIO A, bit zero as set as one, offset is 30. And what is memory map? Memory map is where it shows where the buses are connected to which address. So that's what memory map is. Memory map is in one location. If you take um, advanced high performance bus one, all these registers are used and connected and interface to the microcontroller. Whereas advanced high performance peripheral bus two, it's used for a use USB operation. So we are not using that here. We are concentrating on HB one. So that's the memory map. Again, if you go to the reference manual, if you go into page 37, you will see this. So we are using GPIO A, and that's the address we're going to use, 4002, That's for the LED, and for push button, we're going to use GPIO C, because it's connected in PC13, port C, pin 13, and its address is 4002-0800. So these two are important and I will show you how and where you can get from the ID. If not, come to this data sheet and you can get the address from here. An address is very important because that's where you tell the register where it is and what you're going to do with that register in order to perform your logic to work. So a register and its address is very important. Yeah, that shows the various starting and the end address of each and every ports connected to that bus. Okay, let's get in to see what's involved to blink an LED. To blink an LED, there are three main steps. First, you need to configure and enable the clock on GPIOA, which I shown you in the previous slide. GPIOA bit zero, you have to set that to one to tell the microcontroller you are using port A. And then you need to configure the mode register and you have to set that as an output. And then also you need to set the output data register. That's where you get to write the data to see it in 
um, in the LED format. Uh, so you need to set that as an output. So these three are the main steps. Now let's get into the IDE and I'm going to explain to you um, everything step by step. So take plenty of notes and go through the video again to get yourself more familiar. And let's get into the project and I'll show you. Before that, if you'd like to have a short break, please go and have a short break. When you come back, I'll show you how to write your own code to start to blink that LED. I'll see you back shortly. Go and uh, have a refresher. I'll see you here in a while. See you then. Bye now.